Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at a nice hexic equation. Now, we have x to the 6th power equals x cubed plus 2. I call this equation nice. Actually, we should call this very, very nice because it's missing a lot of terms. Imagine you had an equation like x to the 6th power equals 5x to the 5th minus x to the 4th plus 2x cubed minus 7x squared plus 8x plus 1. And could you solve this problem? Probably not. Is there a hexic, is there a hectic, or I mean hexic formula? There isn't. There's not even a quintic formula, let alone hexic. So we can't solve this in general ways. But this is very special because it's missing a lot of terms, which allows us to use substitution. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how substitution works here. And then we're going to look at all the solutions, real and complex. And at the end, we're going to be looking at the graph and we'll talk about a couple different things which i find very interesting i hope you share that sentiment anyways x cubed equals t will turn this into a quadratic equation it's that simple right okay but that's an important strategy that we often use with these kinds of equations so if x to the third power is t then x to the sixth power is going to be t squared so we're going to get something as simple as t squared equals t plus 2. You can definitely guess and check at this point, but let's go ahead and solve it. For those people who are not familiar with um, guess and check method or who are new to algebra. So we're going to be factoring this equation because we can find two numbers whose product is negative 2 and whose sum is negative 1. And those numbers are negative 2 and 1. Think about it. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, and that's the coefficient of t right here. That's what we are looking for. So now this equation is factored as t minus 2 times t plus 1. And this gives us two solutions. But I told you this is a hexic equation and there should be six solutions with repetitions, of course. OK, let's go ahead and take a look at each one of them. So now first factor gives us t equals 2 and t is what? x cubed. Yay. So let's set it equal to x cubed. Now from here we seem to be getting a single real solution. So x equals cube root of 2 is a solution. But what about the other solutions? Well we have to look at it in the complex world. So let's go to the complex world and see what happens. So we're going to write the 2 as 2 times e to the power 2n pi i. Now what is that supposed to mean? e to the power 2 and pi i is equivalent to 1. What is that supposed to mean? It means in the complex plane, if you graph it, you're going to get 1. Because think about it. 2 pi is equivalent to 0, or you can make as many rotations as you want, but you're going to end up on the x coordinate, or x, uh, what is it called? x axis. Okay, x axis. Or let's call it the real axis. This is real and this is imaginary, right? So you're going to end up here. And the length, the absolute value of our number is 2, so that's going to be 2 units. But guess what? This is 1 because 2 times 1 equals 2. Make sense? It's as easy as that. Now, what is so good about being able to write it in this form, which is the polar form, is you can just cube root it and you're going to get 3 solutions. That's the cool thing about it. Let's go ahead and find out. First of all, we're going to cube root everything cube root of 2 will be there. And to cube root, we're going to be raising e to the power 2 and pi i to the power 1 third. And that's going to give us 2 n pi i over 3. And obviously for different values of n, we're going to get three different values. n equals 0, n equals 1, and n equals 2. Obviously you can get infinitely many, but they're going to be repeating. So this number has three complex roots. Make sense? n equals 0 is going to give us the obvious one, x equals cube root of 2 times 1, or just cube root of 2. That's the only real solution. The others aren't. So how do you find the other one? Well, we can kind of write this as, if n is equal to 1, then it's going to be x equals cube root of 2 times e to the power. Notice that if n is 1, we're going to get 2 pi i over 3. So we kind of have to worry about the values of 2 pi over 3, which we'll, we'll talk about in uh, next. And then the other one is just going to be the cube root of 2 times e to the power 
4 pi i over 3. And then if you make n equals 3, you're going to go back to n equals 0 because that's going to give you 6 pi over 3, which is 2 pi. Great. So those are the solutions. The first one is, I think, obvious real solution. The other two are complex. Let's go ahead and take one of them. For example, x equals cube root of 2 times e to the power 2 pi over 3. Let's go ahead and expand this a little bit. This can be written as cube root of 2 times cosine of 2 pi over 3 plus i times sine 2 pi over 3. Now, if you think about 2 pi over 3, that is actually 120 degrees. And 120 degrees is basically right here. If you look at this cosine value, it's going to be negative 1 half. Its sine value is going to be root 3 over 2. Just memorize this, like how it works on the unit circle. And maybe we can do a video later on uh, about this unit circle thing, because it's very important. So well, we can write this as, uh, let's see, let me write the cube root of 2 first. And then cosine of 2 pi over 3 is just going to be negative 1 half. As you can see, it's, it's basically halfway. So negative 1 half. And this is going to be root 3 over 2i. Notice that in the second quadrant, the y value or the sine is positive. And if you go ahead and distribute it, you're going to get the answer. No big deal, right? That's one of the values. And the other one is just going to give you 4 pi over 3, which is the same thing as 240 degrees. And that's going to be this one. So what happens here is you have the three cube roots of a complex number, and they are equally spaced on the circle, right? How? 120 degrees apart. That's what's cool about the complex roots of a number. Anyways, enough said. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other t value, which is negative 1. This gives you x cubed. Again, we're going to write x cubed as um, e to the power 2n plus 1 pi i, because that's what it is. If you look at odd multiples of pi, that gives you negative 1. And from here, x becomes e to the power 2n plus 1 times pi i over 3. Makes sense? And if you replace n with 0, you get a value. If you replace n with 1, so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and do this. If n is 0, uh, it's kind of interesting. We don't get the real value first. We get 1 half plus root 3 over 2i, which is, by the way, one of the cube roots of negative 1. If you cube this number, you're going to get negative 1. You can test it out. n equals 1 gives you x equals e to the power 2 pi i over 3. And that's going to give you, I'm sorry, not 2 pi over 3. It should be 3 pi i over 3, which is pi i. And that's going to give you a negative 1. Wow, this is the real solution. This is the complex one. And n equals 2 should give you x equals e to the power 5 pi i over 3. And that should be 1 half minus root 3 over 2 i. And these are going to be conjugates. If you go ahead and cube each one of these, you should be getting negative 1. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph, which only shows the real solutions. Now, why did I, these are solutions, okay, I marked them for you right here. The intersection of this function, this time I modified a little bit, it's easier to graph. Uh, why did I mark these points, right? If you look at these points carefully, you can also zoom uh, out a little bit, I mean zoom in. Uh, these are inflection points, that's where the second derivative changes sign. If you take the second derivative of this function and set it equal to zero, you're going to find these values. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.